Hello, this is John Rinaldi, and today I'm in Florence, Italy. In fact, I'm standing at the Piazza della Signoria. This is the, one of the oldest places in Florence, probably one of the most important squares or piazzas in all of Florence. What you see over just over my left shoulder is the copy of the David. That's one of the incredible statues that Michelangelo did. The, uh, the original is, is located in one of the galleries a little bit away from here. But, uh, so I'm in Florence and I've been talk, thinking about all the different kinds of, of uh, things that are happening in the automation industry and the kinds of changes and the things that we as automation engineers need to consider for the future. So I decided to do a series of videos about the different technologies that are going to be important as we move forward and more and more of the IT world is going to, going to integrate with automation. So the first, this is the first of a series. The first video I want to talk about, the first technology I'd like to talk about is XML. Pretty much everybody knows what XML is, but I'm kind of just going to review the concept because XML is, underpins a lot of the kinds of, of stuff that I'll be talking about in future videos. So what is XML? Where did it come from? Well, when, when we started, when the internet actually got together and there were a number of different kinds of computers that had to be connected from one to another, they're trying to figure out how do we get all these different kinds of computers connected because some of them use are byte oriented, some of them are word oriented, some of them are big endian, little endian, they have different processors, different operating systems, different programming mechanisms, different ways of representing floating point data. I mean it was just a, it's just a nightmare. So I decided that the common lowest level way of moving any one thing, moving some piece of information to another system is going to be is going to be ASCII and it's going to be a text file. Everything understands ASCII. Everything pretty much under, can, can can bring in an X file in some fashion. So XML extended extended markup language is a way of just transferring information from one system to another using XML. It's set up with a it's a very highly structured uh, uh, language in that you have an, you have elements and you have an opening element and a closing element. Every element is enclosed in angled brackets, and the closing, el the closing element has a, has a slash and the element name. So it's very simple. Open element, closed element, and then you can have sub-elements in between, or you can have data in between. For example, if you're going to send a temperature, you could have angled brackets, temperature, 32.56, angled brackets, backslash, uh, element, to close the temperature. So that's pretty cool, but there's a number of problems with this, with this, with this, with moving data this way, as you can imagine. Well, first of all, the, the, you've got the, you've got the, this kind of, some kind of real data here, 32.46 or whatever it is, in ASCII. Well, if you go to move that to floating point, you're going to lo actually lose some precision as you go from one system to another. Is that in precision important to you? Sometimes it's probably going to be important. Another thing. What about, what is this temperature? Is that the temperature of the oven? Is that the temperature of the outside, of the inside the plant? Is it the temperature of a, of a process? You don't know what it is. It just says temperature. See, there's no qualification on it. And how does the other system know to expect temperature? It doesn't know what uh, what's going to be in the file. So, what are, a couple of things that they've done to, to get around this kind of stuff is they define namespaces. So if you're going to be using, if you're going to be sending data from this system to that system, you define a namespace, which is nothing more than a particular set of elements that you're going to that you're going to use. So if you're talking about, you define a table. Table is going to be not the leg of a table, not a table that you eat on. It's going to be a table of of particular elements. So the, the the actual element names are defined by these namespaces and fixed to a particular namespace. So that gets you to a point where, okay, now you understand that. But how do you know what's going to be in the XML file? Well, one of the things that uh, it, they came up with there is something called a schema. A schema is nothing but predefines that structure. So as the receiver or as of, a, of an XML file, you know that it's going to have the element temperature, it's going to have a uh, maybe a sub-element called sensor1, and that's going to have a couple of sub-elements within that. Da, da, da. So you know exactly what the format and structure is. So XML is a, is a, is a really good te te technology. It's really simple, easy to understand. The biggest problem with it is going to be, of course, is performance. 
if you're sending a lot of data with a lot of element names, all of that stuff's in ASCII. Every one of those eats up a byte. It takes time and it takes huge amounts of space to, to move that kind of stuff. Certainly not good for low-level sensors and actuators, the kinds of things that we work on all the time. So that's it. My next, uh, next video will be about the next technology in the series, and you'll stay tuned for that. In the meantime, uh, in, in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of a, uh, of, of a shot of the, of the piazza here. It's, a early, it's early morning in, in Florence today. And uh, if, you, if you ever get a chance to see the David in person, it is really worth seeing. Michelangelo did a phenomenal job on this. So let me uh, grab the camera and do a little bit of a panora panorama here. Okay, there. Kind of give you a close-up of, uh, of what the copy of the David is. And when you see it in person, it's absolutely awesome. You can see all of the, the veins of his, of his, in his arms and in his neck, and the detail is just unbelievable. So it's, it, this is, the, this is, this is the, the old palace in, in, in Florence. And the Uffizi is not too far from here. So it's a beautiful place. If I, I urge you to ever get a chance to get here, yeah, you definitely want to come here. Have a good day.